Greetings fellow makers and a happy new year. So this is my first video of 2023 and it's about a computer project called the Cyberdeck PC that was made from recycled laptop parts and clear acrylic sheet. The purpose of this project was to rebuild my outdated malfunctioning laptop and turn it into an all-in-one computer that can be used to watch videos on YouTube or read blogs. This system motherboard is powered by an AMD E2 processor which really isn't a powerhouse making it ideal for online browsing and video viewing. In terms of construction, I essentially disassembled a laptop and took out all the necessary components including the motherboard, display, the I.O. expansion port, camera module and hard drive. I then put these components on an acrylic sheet and attach it to another acrylic sheet with bolts and nut to create a see-through PC, which is then secured with additional screws and PCB standoffs. The Latendosh PC project which I previously created was based on the Latte Panda 3 Delta single board computer and it features the newest 12th gen Intel Celeron processor with 8GB RAM, onboard 64GB eMMC storage and even SSD for making this system super fast. The performance of this PC which I built is nowhere near like that of the Latentosh PC because it only has 4GB RAM which is DDR3 RAM stick, a mechanical 500GB hard disk and a slower AMD E2 7th gen processor. The biggest advantage of this current PC is that it can be upgraded which I will do in the later iteration of this project to improve the boot time and general performance. More RAM will be added and an Stata SSD will replace the mechanical hard drive of this system. Just avoid attempting this whole project with a MacBook as you might upset Apple and void your warranty. Now without any further ado, let's get started with the build. The following materials were used in this build. A donor laptop, acrylic sheet, 445mm by 485mm by 5mm for front and back side. Bolt M5 that are 75mm long, M5 nuts, M3 nuts and bolts, M3 PCB standoffs, 3D printed stand which we need two of these, M3 screws and the most important thing, patience. Now this is the donor laptop that I am using, a Dell Inspiron 15 with an AMD E2 7th gen processor, 4GB DDR3 RAM and 500GB mechanical hard disk drive. This laptop keyboard and trackpad are both completely broken and non-functional and the screen is not an IPS panel. I use this donor laptop, a 2017 model as a device for consuming content for a full year. We begin the salvage operation by first removing the laptop back shell and harvesting the motherboard and hard disk, I.O. board, Wi-Fi card and display from the inside. Prior to dealing with handling sensitive parts like motherboard and I.O. board etc, use caution while salvaging and wear an appropriate ESD strap and ground yourself. Deconstructing large section without causing damage is the primary objective of this salvaging procedure. Here's the motherboard which has been salvaged from the donor laptop. This motherboard is a compact mini ATX like board with a fan attached to a heat pipe and processor for heat dissipation. It also have a USB 3.0 port, an HDMI port, an Ethernet port and an SD card slot. FPC connector are also available for attaching various devices such as external IO port and display. The board core processor is an AMD E2 and is paired with a 4GB DDR3 RAM stick. The AMD E2-1800 also referred as Zek8 was a single channel DDR3-1300-33 memory controller and dual core notebook processor with integrated graphics. The AMD Bobcat architecture which was often used in the low-end microprocessor like E2 in this case is utilized. The Bobcat core and the GPU cores are utilized in the APU with a TDP of 18 watt or less. 
This CPU uses the socket FT1, commonly known as the BGA413 package, and the technology node is 40 nanometer. Overall, this motherboard is not powerful one that can handle demanding tasks like gaming or intensive computing. Nonetheless, we use it to operate a few Chrome tabs or even watch a movie. Future plan include increasing this system RAM and adding an Stata SSD to make it little bit faster so it can be used as a retro emulation system. Or we can just simply boot Batocera or Android into this system to convert it into a Android running machine or even a game emulation OS machine. I purchased this little SBC with an Intel Atom processor from a nearby computer retailer. This device supposedly ran Windows 7 as its primary operating system and was used to run few software applications in an industrial press. It has a single core Intel Atom N450 CPU with a total TDP of 5.5 watt that operate on a 45 nanometer technology node. Although it's been discontinued, more recent versions are currently being produced. With regard to the RAM, it has 2 GB DDR3 RAM stick and a 32 GB M Strata SSD which is just inefficient for operating anything and is another reason why I don't utilize this motherboard. I previously built a Macintosh like computer by using a Latte Panda 3 Delta single board computer which contained 12th gen Intel Celeron processor and it's working pretty well. It works so well that it is running Minecraft. Do check that project out for more context. I first connected all the components of the laptop including the display cable, power switch, FPC cable, hard disk drive and Wi-Fi adapter and booted the machine before beginning the build process. It used to run Windows 10 but it was corrupted so I had to reinstall it. Before deassembling the entire system, just make sure to verify that the OS is functioning. The motherboard is connected to the display and the hard disk drive which are the two essential parts that need to make this PC function. We will also use the I.O. board, which has built-in on-off switchboard, left and right speaker, a charging in port and the USB 2.0 port. Since the laptop batteries were also damaged, the system primary source is its charger. Here's how the Cyberdeck PC is made. It's made out of two acrylic sheets that are bolted together with six M5 bolts. The motherboard screen hard disk are all electronics that are placed between the two panels of acrylic sheet. Using an acrylic sheet allow the PC to be completely transparent, which look amazing. Additionally, two stands are modeled holding the entire PC and ensuring its stability when placed on a disk. We also designed a motherboard holder that uses the PCB standoff and M3 screws to hold the motherboard in its place and attach it to the hard disk drive. This component will be subsequently attached to the acrylic sheet simplifying the assembly. The red PLA was used to print the motherboard holder with a 0.4 mm nozzle and 50% infill. Using a power saw, we first cut the acrylic sheet into two pieces, each measuring 445 mm by 485 mm by 5 mm. Working with acrylic sheet can be challenging. If you use the wrong saw or put too much pressure on it, it could crack. Overuse of force during cutting process caused this front panel to crack from the top side. We take one acrylic sheet and arrange all the parts on it before marking holes for the PCB standoff and nuts and bolt, which will be used to fasten everything to the base sheet. In order to later attach 6 M5 nuts and bolt to hold two sheets together, we additionally add 6 mounting holes to the front sheet. 
After marking the location of the holes, we drill them using an M3 bit for PCB standoff and an M5 bit for larger nuts and bolt to join two sheets together. One hour later. In order to avoid having directly attached the motherboard to the acrylic sheet, we first attach the 3D printed motherboard holder to the base sheet using M3 bolt and nuts. This section also holds the hard disk drive. Then we use 420mm long M3 PCB standoffs to mount the display to the base acrylic sheet. Next we place the IO expansion board by using the same 20mm long M3 PCB standoff. Using the double sided tape we attach two speakers, one left and one right to the PCB's bottom side. The motherboard is then set into position by first connecting it to all of the FPC connectors, including the display port, the charging port, on off switchboard, hard disk, FPC cable, speaker, IO extension board and Wi-Fi module. Now that the motherboard is attached to the acrylic sheet base, we may remove the acrylic sheet cover to reveal the transparent sheet. This setup already looked pretty sick. After placing all the electronics, we add the front acrylic sheet by using 6 M5 bolt and nuts. After placing all the electronics, we add the front acrylic sheet by using 6 M5 bolts and 18 nuts. As result, we now have a durable and solid transparent PC body composes of two acrylic sheet that are attached together using nuts and bolt in this arrangement. One nut holds this single bolt in position. This nut over here is for holding the second sheet. And this nut here holds the sheet in its place. Temporarily removing the front panel, we then use three long M3 screws to attach 3D printed stand. Here is the end result of this build process. A transparent PC with a cool futuristic appearance. The entire computer is transparent allowing us to see the hard disk drive, motherboard and all the parts like the IO expansion board. No, this setup is not imitation of transparent earbuds or power bank made by Shark Geek or nothing brand. Now I'm going to be completely honest here. This PC stinks. The computer is only capable of opening files and running few Chrome tabs. This computer's cheap motherboard and its extremely underpowered processor, which is incapable of performing any meaningful work, are both of its best and worst features. For testing this PC, I ran few 1080p YouTube videos and they loaded without any issue. The speaker worked and the online browsing experience was mostly average. Using this computer is similar to using a terribly slow computer from 5 years ago. It worked but that's about it. I installed a game from 2005 which was this LF2 or Little Fighter 2. I used to play it a lot when I was 10. It's a nice thing that this machine can run this game smoothly.
I tried using other software like PPSS PP emulator and the PS2 emulator, both of which worked, but they didn't simply run enough to play any games adequately. Right now 4 GB of DDR3 RAM is just inefficient to perform even some simple tasks. So the RAM is the first component that has to be upgraded and it should be increased to at least 8 GB. The performance of this OS will be much improved if we use a Stata SSD to boot Windows instead of a mechanical hard disk. I also noticed that when performing basic tasks, the CPU temperature can rise up to 70 degrees or higher, which is not a good number. I'm planning to add a better cooling solution which will include a cooling fan setup so that one fan will pull cool air in and the other one will push the hot air outside the PC body. A much better heat sink will also be added to increase the airflow setup which should cause the CPU temperature to drop slightly. Last but not least, if the Windows 10 OS doesn't work out, I'll use an Android based emulation OS like Phoenix OS or Batocera OS to play games, mostly retro games. If you have any extra laptop lying around, this project is pretty enjoyable and pretty fun. And you can pretty much make a cyber deck out of any laptop. Just don't try it with an Apple MacBook or you'll run into some trouble. Well, this is it for today, folks. Leave a comment if this video was helpful and I'll see you guys with the next project pretty soon. Peace out.